the main question i want to answer in this video is is the z fold 2 for you and the reason i chose that as the question of this video or the main highlight of this video is because this phone is simply not for everyone the first thing that pushes people away from the galaxy z fold 2 is the asking price of $1,999 for this thing right here. So from there and then, you can already tell this isn't a normal phone because no normal phone cost upright of $2,000. But for some people, that price is justifiable. The Z Fold 2 is a very beautiful phone and also it's fragile at the same time. Now don't get me wrong, this phone is built with a lot of high quality materials like for example the glass is Gorilla Glass, Corning, Corning Gorilla Glass as well and also it's built out of aluminum and it feels premium of course but due to all the folding parts this phone isn't rated for any water or dust resistance so if you're someone that has a job where you have to get dirty or there's a lot of dust or exposure to water then this phone isn't for you unless you only want to use it on the weekends or when you get home now for me personally as someone who stays home most of the time or go out now and then this device has changed the way I look at smartphones and Samsung just in general keeps raising the bar for innovation and I like it. After the first fold which got mixed reviews, then the Z Flip, a little detour from the product for demanding customers but it serves its purpose. It was something more unexpected, also brought back some nostalgia. But now the great Samsung is back and they made a phone while at first glance looked like an iPhone 20 meme. When unfolded, it turns into a large, fully usable screen. So when the Fold 2 is in its so-called like cover screen mode, it comes in at just 6.2 inches, but it's very narrow and it's kind of limited to use as a phone. Now the keyboard also on the front screen is very small to type on and viewing content and media is just not the overall best experience. Sometimes I'm forced to use the cover screen when I'm out and about in real world usage. You can't always have the time to unfold your device to use it. So when I'm checking notifications or answering calls on the run, you know, that's what I mostly do on the cover screen. For me, there's no issue, but when I have like the time to sit down unfold the device and use it. I never really tried to force myself through the pain to use the cover screen as like my phone, you know? So I always spend most of my time unfolding the device and using it in the tablet mode. So when you unfold the device, you get a larger 7.6 inch 120 hertz display and man it's gorgeous. The screen also emits blue lights so it's perfect for viewing content for long like long periods without eye strain. And yes, you could see the line in the middle. It's still very steep, not only in appearance but especially in touch. Now, I can see this being an issue for most people, but for me, I always forget it's there and you can truly see the line in the middle if you look for it or when viewing the phone at different angles, which I never really do because I always just view my phone from front on. Now, the typing experience on the larger display is also really good, but I use a third-party keyboard called Gboard. I like the swipe to type feature on Gboard, and it also doesn't break the keyboard into half like the default Samsung keyboard does. I'm not sure if you could turn the option off, but the the way how Samsung breaks the keyboard in half is not really ergonomic in my opinion. The fingerprint reader could not find a place directly on the screen due to the insufficient sophistication of the folding technology. Instead it was placed on the side of the device. It works really well and it stands out really nice looking good on the side where the power button lies as well. Samsung's multi-window system is a vital like experience with the Fold 2. It lets you have this split screen of applications or even use up to three apps. For example, I've used windowing to research Chrome while also monitoring my Discord server and also looking at emails as well. Also, using the desktop version on apps like Chrome actually feels like the desktop version. I don't have to be zooming in and out of pages to see content like what I usually do with regular phones. Now, when watching YouTube videos on regular devices, I hate that I can't read the comments while watching the video at the same time. But with the Z Fold 2, it has like this flex mode support so I can fold the phone into half and watch content while looking through the comments at the same time. 
but with most apps like Twitch, it's still not supported for flex mode, which sucks. Now, in terms of gaming performance, you guys know how I love playing games. Gaming performance on the Z Fold 2 is crazy. You know, you have that 12 gig RAM, so playing games like PUBG, Fortnite, Asphalt, Call of Duty Mobile, it all looks great and performs well on the 120Hz refresh rate. The vivid colors and sharp details is there, it looks great, paired with one of the best sounding speakers on any smartphone that I've ever tested to date. And that can make me safely say that the Z Fold 2 is probably the best smartphone a mobile gamer can own right now. The only thing that could compare is offerings from OnePlus in my opinion. Now Samsung also promises all day battery life with the Z Fold 2 which is true. I got through full days with this device and the Z Fold 2 also combines two batteries. So when you like basically it has one half of a battery on this side and also one battery on this side which both adds up to 4500 million powers now to me the camera situation on this phone is crazy there's a total of five cameras on this device there's three megapixels on the rear and also two 10 megapixels on the front and also when you unfold the device there's another camera in here which is crazy now samsung probably makes the best smartphone cameras for like for example the Note 20 Ultra alongside Huawei with their P40 Pro but for me this camera on here is it's pretty average now it also has cool camera features though in the camera app like you use in flex mode for the camera which basically lets you take a picture or a video from weird angles and the flex mode also supports Samsung's auto framing feature which is kind of good if you're making vlogs basically just keeps whoever is talking in frame and zooms in and zooms out so wherever your head moves it will make sure that you're in the center of the shot. There's also a dual preview mode which lets you use both the screens to make sure that the person you're taking a photo of gets to see how the shot is aligned before you take the pic or basically you could use that feature to use the back cameras as your selfie cam which is kind of cool. Now if anything I mentioned in this video is tasteful for you then maybe you should consider the Z Fold 2 as your phone or tablet. It's a phone when closed and when unfolded it's a mini tablet for the price of $2,000. If you have the luxury to spend that much on a phone then trust me you will love this thing. If you don't have the time to always sit down, unfold the device and use it then to me it's pointless. If you're a business person and you're always on the go. I could see this phone being very powerful to you, like using Microsoft Words, checking your email on different screen, but in reality, as I said before, if you don't have time to sit down, unfold the device and enjoy the device, then what's the point of purchasing the Galaxy Z Fold 2? Because as I mentioned, when you close this thing, you get the smaller six inch screen right here and it's very hard to use, it's tacky. It's amazing, it's a step up from the previous phone, but then you have this bulky device, small narrow screen at the front, you could hardly use it like, you know? So yes guys, hopefully you enjoyed my review of the Galaxy Z Fold 2. If I missed anything, please let me know down below in the comments or if there's any thing that you think Samsung could improve on this device, let me know down below in the comments as well. As always guys, love, peace and tweaks. Signing out.